We recently got confirmation that the attorney general um, decided to move Richard Allen. Mm, to where? So they moved him to Wabash Correctional Facility. Um, so it's good. Like, it's good. From what I see here, um, it, it says that, you know, they felt like he was in imminent danger and should be moved. And I agree. He should have been moved from the beginning. But to another prison? No way. It really says that he was in imminent danger? Yeah, I mean, it's it's because of the request by the lawyers that essentially they didn't agree with Judge Goal that... No, I, I got that you. That the lawyers but... were lying about him being in danger, so he forced them to move him away from Westville. Okay, so another judge looked at it and said that they agree with Richard attorney Allen's... Attorney General. Okay, the Attorney General looked at it and said that they agree that the defense attorneys have enough information there to show he could be in imminent danger, right? That's yeah. what you're saying? Basically. I mean, it's not that they're necessarily agreeing. They're just saying that there is a threat or harm as possible, so he should be moved. Yeah. Yeah. That That's... Pretty much agreeing that there's a threat. I, I'm just saying that's really interesting because that is the first time we've heard that there's any, 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 anything here of worth that shows Richard Allen could be in danger. Mm -hmm. That's a huge deal. I don't. It is a big deal. Like massive incredible huge deal this is the first time that our the justice system in indiana has said okay we're we're willing to say there might be something going on here yeah and i well yeah that's and massive i mean there was already admission of the correctional officers wearing patches they admitted it um you know the westville prison they admitted it everybody admitted that stuff they just didn't admit to causing him physical harm or mental harm just that they wore the patches and were odinous or you know yeah I, I hear you but still a statement is doesn't mean anything a statement anybody can say anything in a statement but you know it, it by all by by all accounts what it seemed like in indiana is that their justice system and courts and prosecution have been fighting back this idea extremely hard about the possibility of there being any person or persons or group of people that are trying to harm richard allen or create this story so the fact that they said hey, we're going to give you this, I think is one of the biggest things that I've seen. Yeah, so I agree with you. It's great. It's great that they did that. But in the same respect... It's just wild. They moved him to another prison. He is not convicted. I still have an issue with him being in a prison. I don't feel like that's fair. I don't feel like that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is, like, basically unheard of. You go to a county jail, not a prison. Yeah. So, additionally, I started looking up what is Wabash Valley Correctional Facility? Like, what are there any rumors out there about it? Like, what's going on with that place? Um, I know Sleuthy Goosey posted a documentary about it. I didn't have time to watch it. But I did see, like, the first few seconds, and it said it's like, one of the prisons with some of the worst criminals in the state that houses some well, of the worst. He's going to be held by himself regardless. You're though. right. But here's what I found that was concerning. And that is when I looked on the IDOC Wabash Valley Correctional Facility Facebook page and looked at their reviews, I found a post from November 16th, 2019 that says... We want answers. We want justice. Justice for Brandon Lewis. Wabash Valley said there was no foul play. Autopsy says otherwise. Who couldn't see obvious stab marks and blood and tell a family member there was no foul play? 
answer us, left laying in the cell for 13 hours. Autopsy also says so. Uh, they need to answer to us. So, and then I dug a little bit deeper mm. and I found interviews with his mother talking about she was literally en route to visit him that day and got a phone call from another inmate saying there was a problem and then got another phone call and said, he's gone, he's, he's dead. And she mm. said the the prison literally did not care about her at all. They didn't care at all. And they wouldn't give her any information. And she had to raise money to get an autopsy. She had she set up a GoFundMe page to get his autopsy. Mm. Crazy. It's really, really sad. So, I mean, I can't find hardly anything on it. What I just told you is what I found. I found YouTube. I found the GoFundMe. Like, you, a YouTube video and an interview with her on YouTube by, like, a smaller channel. Um, well, yeah, it's, uh, J Renee is the YouTube channel is what mm. it's called. Um, just horrible, you know, horrible. If that's what truly what happened here, cause there's no, I can't find any media articles on it. Like none. Yeah. Which is strange. And then I also found on Google that. This year, they had um, a death in their facility, um, and they ended up declaring that it was accidental, but they will not release any information on it at all. Hmm. Because they were investigating but, the death. But does this have anything to do with Richard Allen? No, I'm just questioning why another prison, why this prison? And the only reason I'm questioning that is because of the amount of suspicious things we've seen in this case and happened to Richard Allen since the beginning. The fact that he was arrested. Two months later, these officers start working in the prison where he's housed. Two months later, they get promoted and are start wearing those patches and are overseeing him. Yeah. Yep. Within four months, these officers were hired and overseeing him and wearing those patches. And at that exact time when they start overseeing him is when his mental health starts taking a downward spiral. Yep. yep. That is too coincidental for me. And we've looked at the documents and done the math and it adds up. So when I just hopefully since it's coming up from a higher up like the attorney general, hopefully like things are going to be paid attention to more here um it just it makes me concerned like why didn't he move him to county somewhere yeah why to another prison yeah and and i want to i i want a statement from the people making these decisions of why you are housing him in a prison because in my mind that isn't safer yeah well here's the thing though is so in 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 a case like this, you're going to be held by yourself. Yeah. So does it matter where you're really at? And I was thinking about this uh, last week because it can. I said that originally too. But when – like think of Brian Koberger, okay? He's not being held in the prison. He's being held in the jail. He's never allowed to come out of his cell. Uh, he gets fed food, all this stuff, whatever. He has his own little TV, whatever. Um, Richard Allen, does it matter that he's in a jail cell or does it matter that he's in a prison cell? I, I don't think it matters either way. My big concern is just with the personnel. I don't care about the location. All prisons are shady. That's a given. We've talked about this many, 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 many times. They're all shady, every single one of them, because they're privately owned. The only way that I would ever feel like uh, there's some worth and trust that can be put into our prison system is if it's federally owned and managed and ran and accountability and has standards and is meeting those standards and checkups and oversight and everything that comes with it. Uh, privately owned prisons are not that way and they never will be that way because they are there about the bottom line and the profit dollar. So um, 
my big concern is have they done thorough background checks around the people that are going to be managing him? Have they done thorough background checks and made sure that these guys are reliable, trustworthy, and have zero connections from any of the other guys that are from that other prison? Because that is the threat, not the location. The location isn't the threat. It's the people who's managing him. It is the people who's managing him, but I also am concerned because, uh, yes, I see – if somebody looked the other way, a guard, a paid guard, which it's a very real thing, okay? Prison politics are a big thing. A lot, like in a lot of prisons across the country, literally the prisoners run the prison. Yep. It just makes me concerned that somebody could look the other way. Now, that is a lot harder to do when it's an active case. Yep. But I don't know. I want to know what you guys think about it. Do you think what I pulled up matters at all? Um, I don't know if it does or not. I really don't know. And we don't have many answers in those other cases of people dying in the prison. Um, you know, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter where he's housed. But to me, it's like the principle of it, of putting someone who's not convicted yet in prison. And also with what's already happened. You know? Yeah, my number one concern is safety. Yeah, I don't. Even I agree care. with you. It's about the safety. So, um, yeah. yeah, I want him wherever it's safest, so that we can get to the bottom of this case. Yeah, have a fair yep. trial. Absolutely. Get to the truth. Justice for Abby and Libby. Yep, absolutely. But let me know what you guys think.